Not all stories end in the ultimate. Ultimate tragedy. Um, but they can carry lifelong consequences. And now I'd like to ask Justin to come up here. He's um, here with his wife, Jessica, um, and they also have a story. Justin. First of all, I want to say thank you to NHTSA and the California Office of Traf Traffic Safety and to Mercy San Juan Medical Center. <clears throat> Good grief, I didn't. I rehearsed this and I never cried once. Can I get a couple of those? I know I'm going to need some. <laughs> and to Mercy San Juan for organizing and, and hosting this event. I also want to say thank you to Janet Fennell with KidsInCars.org for her tireless efforts to help protect children and for inviting me to speak at this event. <clears throat> Finally, I want to take this opportunity to thank my lovely wife, Jessica, for all of her unending dedication to our family and our home. Without you, we wouldn't be who we are today. <clears throat> when I was asked to attend this function, I turned and said to my wife, how can we not attend? And I realized that's probably not the first reaction that you would hope to hear, but that was mine. That statement wasn't made out of a sense of dread or fear or even pain. Rather, that question was born out of a sense of responsibility and duty. <clears throat> Most of you at this event, save a small handful, are here as a result of your career choices backed with a well-qualified education lasting many years. You've been made aware of a tragic issue and are working to find solutions to solve this modern day phenomena. My education was brief. <clears throat> My education spans all of three short hours. That's the amount of time that our nine-month-old daughter, Sarah Corinne, spent in our van three years ago, three years, two weeks, and one day ago. The goal I have for this event here today is not to have you relive that event with me, nor do I wish you to experience our lives since that time. I'm not here to tell you about the year after those three hours when my wife was scrutinized and accused as a felonous child abuser. There are no words that can describe the feeling of seeing your precious nine-month-old princess literally moments away from death in the very place you put her to keep her safe. To see her breathe the same shallow breaths that my grandmother was breathing the day that she passed away. I can't describe to you what it feels like to rush her in the house and when you're wrapping her in a water-soaked towel to have the overwhelming thought go through your mind, I can't believe she's gonna die in my arms. There are no words that would adequately describe any of the horrors and challenges that we've faced since that time. I can't properly describe the weeks in the hospital holding meetings with doctors who say she only has three days to live and mix that in with interrogations from well-meaning investigators and social workers. Nor can I describe the feelings and experiences of the last three years during this long process of recovery when recovery seems to be just a fleeting fantasy. I can't tell you what it feels like to walk past her bedroom door not, three, not more than three weeks ago and hear her muffled crying and sobbing from not being able to roll over on her own yet. And when I open the door I see her hand in her mouth covered in blood because she doesn't have control over her biting reflex and her finger just happened to be in her mouth when she woke up. In all reality, there are no words that can express any of the experiences that we've had and there have been many more since that time. So my goal, born of the duty of responsibility that comes with my education and experience, is to prevent anyone from knowing my experiences and prevent this education that my family still receives to this day. The details that cause this experience in our lives are similar to the ones that you've no doubt been told about and read about. My wife and I had a miscommunication while driving home from a family funeral. It was always my duty to bring the babies in from the van, from our three older boys when they were babies 
to our daughter. For 10 years, I always brought the baby in because they always sat behind me on my side of the van. This time, I thought that I had communicated to Jessica that she was to bring her in. But unfortunately, that's not the message she received, and she heard something different. And as a result, we each thought the other had brought our baby girl in inside and placed her in her crib to finish her nap. Not once was she ever forgotten. But that moment of miscommunication, coupled with the fact that Sarah Corinne was asleep in her car seat, created a dangerous gap in protection that Sarah Corinne fell through. And it's that gap that we're here today to seal. Due to the events in our lives, I myself have had an audience with and made efforts to bring technology to a major car seat manufacturer that would help seal that gap in protection. But the challenge that they face, along with all of us here today, that must be overcome is the fact that good parents and daycare workers can't even imagine a situation where this might happen to them. Good parents don't just say, that would never happen to me. You see, good parents don't even consider that it could happen. Distractions and miscommunications are just that. They are moments and situations that fool good parents into thinking that everything is still okay. They already think that everything is covered. And education, while absolutely necessary and beneficial, cannot prevent these moments and situations. We know this because if you ask any parent or daycare worker who have inadvertently left their child in a vehicle, would you have retrieved the child if they'd been alerted? The answer, of course, would be a, a, a confused look on their face and say, absolutely, of course, almost offended with great conviction. And then we get to think about the word if again with added sorrow in our hearts. And for that reason, Mandated technology is the key to sealing the gap in protection. I love a quote I heard from uh, Jeanette Fennell. It's Jeanette Fennell. Since when did it become more important not to have a dead car battery than a dead child? And while I have this opportunity, there's something I really want to express. Mine and Jessica's circumstance with Sarah Corinne is similar in so many ways to that of parents like Haley, who have lost a child uh, due to this gap in protection. But we still won't know the pain and experience that you've been through. We have the privilege of enduring her recovery process, challenging as it is. But we get to look at August 16th, 2008, not as a tragedy, but as the day that God saved our little girl's life. And Haley, we want to express that we're truly sorry for your loss. There are many times that I've been upset with God and hurt that Sarah Crane's healing and recovery has taken even this long, but I'm truly thankful and grateful to have the opportunity for recovery and healing in her life. I also want to express how proud I am of my daughter, Sarah Corinne. Throughout this process, she's exhibited tremendous strength and determination, and I have complete faith that she will recover fully from her injuries. If you'd like to follow her recovery progress, we'd like to welcome you to do that. You can do that by liking her uh, page on Facebook. It's simply uh, facebook.com slash Sarah Corinne Joy. That's Sarah with no H and Corinne with one R and two N's. I want to close with a reminder of how I opened my time with you. There's more technology in my smartphone that rests in the palm of my hand than we had to safely land on the moon. The technology exists today that would significantly seal the gap in protection of our children and those who care for them. So the question that you should ask yourself and your colleagues is not how can we protect them, but rather with a sense of duty and responsibility. Ask yourself and your colleagues, how can we not? Thank you. Justin, I want to thank you and your wife, Jessica, and also Haley for being here today. I think you guys speak to all of us as parents, and I want to thank the media for being here and getting this message out, because as you've heard, it can happen to anybody. And I want to thank 
all the speakers that are here, all the first responders. Uh, and now the press is invited to view the demonstration car with the inside and outside temp showing, which is right here. Uh, and all of the speakers are here um, for interviews. And we're also having a town hall meeting in just a few minutes, um, which is over in the Lucan's Auditorium, which is just inside the Medical Center. And we have staff that can lead us there in uh, just a few minutes. So I want to once again thank everyone for coming. I want to thank the administrator for being here. Um, here, um, you showing your support for what we're doing here in California and, and our ability to also support what you're doing, I think really makes a difference. So Ron, thank you again for being here.